Uh, I w do want to acknowledge also that we are on Treaty 6 territory, uh, the traditional homeland of the Métis. And a few years ago, S Saskatoon Public Library um, committed ourselves to uh, reconciliation efforts. We've done a few things to make that our, that discussion move forward. Every time I host a program, I try to think about my reconciliation journey and how I'm committed to it and what I'm doing, not only as an employee here, but as a person who lives in Saskatoon. And I try to make my think about my treaty acknowledgement in a different way every time. And not just a script, but thinking seriously about what it means to be on land that my ancestors, my uh, grandparents settled, and now I'm in a different place than they were. And people who were living when my grandparents settled the land are in a very different place than I am. So I, that's my contribution to the reconciliation discussion today, currently, where I'm at. Without anything else, I think I'm going to hand it over to Anang from the Saskatchewan Environmental Society. Thanks, Megan. Good evening, everyone. And uh, welcome to the Sustainability Speaker Series event for June. Uh, my name is Anang Kyashim, and I am I was a former, I'm a former resident of Saskatoon. Uh, I moved to Edmonton last fall, which is on Treaty 6 territory, the um, traditional territory of the Cree, Dene, Blackfoot, and other um, First Nations, as well as um, the homeland of Métis peoples. Uh, before I introduce today's speaker, I'd like to say a few words about the Saskatchewan Environmental Society. Uh, the Saskatchewan Environmental Society works towards environmental sustainability through public education, policy development, and community events addressing issues related to sustainable energy and climate solutions, uh, water protection, biodiversity preservation, and reduction of toxic substances in our environment. Um, and if you'd like to receive email notifications of future events at the uh, speaker series, you can send an email to info at environmentalsociety.ca. And info is uh, info at environmentalsociety.ca. And in your email message, ask to be put on the list of people to be notified of events in the speaker series. Uh, this evening, our speaker is Aditi Garg. Uh, Aditi is an educational uh, development specialist uh, helping educators, educators design courses and programs that allow students to develop competencies for social, environmental, and economic sustainability and to help meet the sustainable development goals through teaching and learning. Her background is in high school French, mathematics, science, and outdoor education. She volunteers with the Canadian Wildlife Federation's Wild Outside Program and is a climate reality leader. Um, Aditi believes that youth engagement with nature is critical for informing new policies for the environment. Uh, she is a first generation settler with stories and memories in Treaty 1 and Treaty 6 territories. Uh, the title of Aditi's presentation is The Climate Crisis and Its Solutions. And with that, I will pass it off to Aditi to begin her presentation. Thank you, Anang, and thank you, Megan and uh, Carol, for inviting me to speak today. I'm going to go ahead and get my presentation set up here. So bear with me a second. Can I just get a thumbs up? Does that look right? Do you see a presentation on your screen? Yes, okay. You can see just the presentation, not the presenter view. 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. It's full awesome. screen. You're good to go. Great. Thank you. I'm always uh, a little nervous about that. Um, so thank you for, for double checking that. I am going to be using the chat box today. So please feel free to pull that up on your screen. I like to be able to get some feedback from the folks who are attending. Thanks for making some time in your evening to come and listen and learn a little bit about the Climate Reality Project and the work that they do and work that we do as a climate reality hub, as a group of climate activists here in Saskatoon, um, and kind of why we find our work important. Um, so I'm aiming to speak for about 30 to 45 minutes and then hopefully leave some room for questions. Um, as uh, mentioned, I am based um, at the University of Saskatchewan, which is on Treaty 6 territory, and before that, Saskatoon Public Schools in Saskatoon as well. And uh, I love Saskatoon, and I've been here for over 20 years, coming here from Winnipeg, Treaty 1 territory. And uh, one of the things I love about Saskatchewan is the river and how there's access to river for anyone along the along the Miwasan Trail. And uh, I've had the opportunity to learn from um, my employer and from wherever I've worked, there have been great knowledge keepers. Um, so I'm very thankful to the Spidell family, to Tracy Laverty, to um, Stryker Calvez and Rose Roberts for being willing to share about their past, about their, their ancestors, about their present and about their dreams and hopes for the future um, for First Nations and Indigenous people in um, and, and Métis people in Saskatchewan. So um, I'm very thankful to be able to um, work towards climate action in Saskatchewan. I think preserving our, um, our, our, our river is of utmost importance and I find that uh, I want things to be better and I work towards being a good ancestor for the protection of the river and the climate in Saskatoon for that reason. Um, I encourage you to uh, let me know where you are based. So feel free to type into the chat if you are on different traditional lands, um, you can always use nativeland.ca um, to figure out what land you are on. And I welcome you to add that into the chat. Let me know where you're based. So I'll give you uh, 30 seconds to do that now. If you're based in Saskatoon or elsewhere, I'd love to know where you're coming from. So please take a moment if you can to type into the chat um, to let me know where you are from. And I guess I should double check. Can everyone see my the native land in the chat? Yes. Awesome, thank you. So feel free to write that into the chat and let me know where you are coming from today. Um, and I'm, as I mentioned, I'll keep talking while you're doing that. Uh, the one thing that's nice about Miwasan is that it is such a long trail and it goes, runs right through the city. Um, and we've got many bridges and I find the bridges are a great metaphor for finding connection and coming together and finding different ways of getting to um, a different, to getting to the same destination. Uh, and one thing I like about Saskatoon is that you can uh, get from one end to the other, from Gordie Howe Bridge all the way up to the north end, Chief Mistawasis Bridge, and there will soon be a new highway north of Wanuskewin with, um, uh, that will be built. And that whole length is about 20 kilometers. And that 20 kilometers is significant because it's about the same vertical length as our atmosphere. And that's the atmosphere that is protecting us. Um, the entire atmosphere, depending on how you define it, is the same length as that river valley trail. And I think that there's, a, there's something interesting to think about there, that, that is the cushion of air protecting us, protecting the planet. And that's what we get to preserve and think about. And I walk on the trail quite a bit, in fact, um, in my past life, when I was a high school teacher, I used to take my students um, on lots of long distance hikes to the Boreal Trail, to um, the Hike to Grail's Cabin. Um, so to prepare for those longer hikes, we would do practice walks and we would walk the Miwasan Valley and getting the students to be able to say that they walked every bridge in Saskatoon was definitely a highlight. Um, and that was my first exposure into environmental and outdoor education was being a youth leader. And I still do that. I volunteer with Wild Outside, as was mentioned. Um, this compelled me to study youth engagement with nature in my master's and to get involved with environmental advocacy with the city of Saskatoon on the municipal advisory committee for, um, for the environment. So uh, I wanted to be able to preserve and to take care of Saskatoon for these future uh, users of Miwasan, future um, citizens of Saskatoon. Um, and that engagement, getting involved with my with, with municipal uh, policy groups, also got me involved with the Saskatchewan Outdoor Environmental 
education association, Sask Outdoors, and um, focusing on um, getting helping other outdoor educators. And in 2019, we um, hosted a conference called uh, Action on um, Climate Change Through Education, and it was the first climate change education conference in uh, in Canada, so that was really cool. And we had everyone from higher education, elementary, K to 12, um, different folks um, involved who came out to um, learn and to grow together. And so I have to say that's thanks to groups like um, Saskatchewan or the Sustainability and Education Policy Network, SEPIN, Sustainability Education Research Institute, SERI, and the University of Saskatchewan that came together for that conference. Um, and it was at that conference that um, being involved with the Saskatoon Environmental Advisory Committee, I'm gonna call that SEAC for short. Um, so I'll put that, how that's spelt in the chat, S-E-A-C. -C. Um, so getting involved with SEAC, um, SEAC was invited, um, I kind of helped make that connection, um, to come to this conference and sit on a panel. And I was a fellow panelist with uh, Margaret Asmus, who is very, probably very well known to many of you from SES. Um, Margaret Asmus, who's done work with Climate Justice Saskatoon, who's footsteps I'm following in at the University of Saskatchewan. Um, she was on the panel and she was talking about climate action and she mentioned climate reality leadership and climate reality training. And so I looked it up after the panel and, and I um, thought, hey, that's something that I could probably do. And it worked out that the next workshop was going to be um, somewhere close by. I was going to be in Minneapolis, so relatively close to Saskatoon, and I could actually get there. It was during the summertime when I had holidays from teaching, so it worked out to me and go, to go for that training. And, you know, they said, oh, we'll teach you about sustainability solutions, working towards a just transition, learning with other activists in small group settings. So I thought, awesome, that sounds really great. Um, I hadn't really looked into climate action before this, and it just so happened that this bridge of mine from SEAC to Sask Outdoors to this climate education conference got me interested in climate action. And I was a little bit intimidated to start because I thought of climate action, I thought of images like this. I thought about activists in the street, I thought about protests, and that's not something that I was super comfortable with. And I didn't really feel like the climate champion of my family. And I say that because this person in yellow here at the front um, is my baby sister. And my baby sister is a marine ecologist who works on climate action day in, day out. Um, she she works, um, this is actually in Edmonton a few weeks before Greta Thunberg came. This was the climate strike in 2019. Um, she's the protester in the streets, the advocate in action and the ecologist with evidence. Um, she's being a marine ecologist. Um, it's tough to sometimes feel it's like, oh, how can I ever speak up about climate action? I'm a teacher. Um, she actually knows this stuff. Um, but I had to, uh, you know, think about the ways that I can operate in ways that I can contribute to climate action in way, different ways that she can. And um, I am going to do a little plug for her here. Um, she's involved with a great series on climate action um, through Banfield Marine Science Center. So you can click on that link later, save it. Um, it's a, a whole series of, climate, of ocean scientists um, and folks related to ocean advocacy uh, talking about climate action from a marine perspective. So definitely like she knows that stuff inside out, but I thought, what can I do? Um, so, you know, I think what I had to come back to was that I was involved with climate action. I was doing, I was involved with the Saskatoon Environmental Advisory Committee. I had been on SEAC since 2015, um, thinking more about youth engagement with nature. But, you know, um, during that time, we started to talk and, and, and started to develop um, a reason for why Saskatoon should have a greenhouse gas emission strategy. And so SEAC, um, in fact, set the targets for what our greenhouse gas emissions reduction plan would be. Um, so we proposed these numbers to city council and they adopted them based on, you know, conversations with other um, city employees and based on in good science. Um, but, you know, we set ambitious targets and the city accepted them, which we didn't actually think would happen. Um, so we were we were pleasantly surprised when they accepted them. And I will I'll get to later if we actually met them or what how I think we're doing on them. Um, but I was I was pleased that we were able to make that connection. I'll mention, too, that um, in that in, in the reports that the city of Saskatoon has prepared regarding greenhouse gas emissions. There are three key words that come up to me, warmer, wetter, wilder. And I'm curious to know um, if you want to put this in the chat, if you think that one of these is most important to Saskatoon, there's no wrong answers. I'm just curious to know if you, if one of these is a priority to you, um, are you concerned that cities in Saskatchewan are getting warmer or wetter or wilder? I'd love for you to contribute to the chat. Um, if you can add one of those words in now, I'd love to know um, what you think about if um, if this is a concern to you. Do you see your city getting warmer or wetter or wilder, just anecdotally or based on anything that you've observed? 
can take 30 seconds here. Got one person saying warmer. Yeah, so we definitely know that there's um, evidence that Saskatoon is getting warmer for sure. And I'm sure other cities as well. Another person putting in warmer. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I'm putting a link. Oh, I will add another link that's not copying. Um, we made a video um, to help connect the, with community members to say, hey, yes, yeah, climate change is important. Climate change is a municipal issue. Um, you know, we are getting warmer, wetter and wilder. And that looks that can manifest in different ways, which I'll come to in a few minutes. So keep those three words in your mind as we progress. And we'll talk about that as we get as we move forward. Someone in the chat just mentioned Saskatoon is definitely getting warmer. Manitoba is looking both warmer and wetter. Yeah. So um, we, we've heard a lot of, about flooding this year. Um, great to note. So just to come back to the Climate Reality Project. Um, so I did go down in 2019. Um, I'll mention, I was actually, it's interesting that summer, I had been asked to come um, help out with a friend's uh, youth diving program in Florida. So scuba diving with teens, 13 to 18, um, in the Florida Keys. And these are youth scientists, scientific divers. So they're actually learning about marine ecology. Um, and my sister was doing coral research there at the same time too. So I had made kind of a trip of it, went down for about a month, and then was coming back via Minneapolis. And so in the Florida Keys, I literally stepped out of the ocean, got on a plane, got into Minneapolis, and I had huge, um, I would say culture shock because I had just come out of the pea soup water of the Florida Keys. And why is it pea soup? Why is it all murky and, and not great visibility? Because of agricultural runoff and warming water. So I had just literally witnessed effects of a heating planet and being um, and, and, and human impact on, 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 on the oceans um, in the Gulf. Uh, and then I was in this air conditioned cold room in the middle of Minneapolis and with a thousand people. And it was, it was really shocking. Um, it was tough to be in a room full of a thousand people, even during the pandemic or before the pandemic. Um, but, uh, I was really thankful to get the opportunity to get to meet some interesting people. I was placed at a table of Canadians and Francophone Canadians because I speak French and I guess I'd put that on the application form, but I got to, you know, hang out with some really cool folks and learn about projects happening in Manitoba and Ontario and Quebec. Um, there weren't any other people from Saskatchewan, unfortunately, um, but at least I got to learn about those, about um, things happening in other places. And then when I came back to Saskatoon is when a climate reality leader who'd already been trained at a previous session, Diane Rhodes, reached out and she welcomed me and got me involved with Climate Justice Saskatoon a little bit. And I got to meet other folks like Linda and Tom. Um, and so, you know, there've been, I've made a lot more connections now. And since the pandemic, there's been, there's been a strategy to do online trainings as well as in person. And um, uh, Linda and Tom here in Saskatoon, they've been, um, be, they've become online facilitators. And I think that it's a really cool opportunity now to get to work with people more intimately and, and directly. I frankly found that with a thousand people in the room, it was kind of tough to feel like you made strong connections over three days. So I think that there's some real benefits that how Climate Reality Project has grown and adapted and made their training more efficient because of the pandemic. So a little bit of a silver lining there. Um, and we and here in Saskatoon, the Climate Reality Group, we've had held a couple um, virtual gatherings for the for the greater community in Saskatoon and Saskatchewan. So I feel really good about being able to contribute to those um, to those plans in 2020 and 2021 in the fall of 2021. Um, people who have been trained through climate reality were involved with uh, planning a rally um, around climate action. And that was quite well attended, I thought, for, for you know, still being during pandemic times and being masked. Um, we, had, um, we had a masking policy in place and it uh, went off pretty well. So, you know, climate reality, I think the benefit really is that you get to make community. So I wanted you to know that um, if, if you're interested in getting involved and learning more, you don't need to come with any prior climate knowledge. Um, there's lots of kind caring people here in Saskatoon who are willing to have a conversation and get to know a little bit better. Um, and before I did climate reality training, I actually had done um, sustainable development goal training um, in 2017. And so the sustainable development goals are the United Nations goals for um, helping address sustainability. Um, this focuses on people and planet um, getting to peace and prosperity through partnership. And I really like the SDGs because it gives us common language, even though these are global goals, sometimes we just need to be reminded that we're all working towards the same things and that, you know, um, we all want, we all know what good looks like and we all want to be able to thrive and survive. Um, and 
that we can only do that coming back to if we have that strong atmosphere and strong biosphere. And so I really like this model. It's called the wedding cake model of the sustainable development goals, where we have the base layer, the bottom layer, that's all about the biosphere, life on land, life below water. And then we move into what would make a strong functioning society and what would help contribute to the economy is on top of that. It relies on having a strong society. And so um, this is a great model that I use quite a bit in my work in sustainable development and that I come back to and find alignment with. And we can all think about ways that we're working towards the sustainable development goals or which ones are our priorities. Um, seeing climate action there at the bottom and then how we require partnership all the way through all the layers to make these happen. And that's the realm that I've been working in mostly. I think about partnerships, um, which is SDG 17, SDG being sustainable development goals, um, as what's key when it comes to sharing climate policy agendas, working together, knowing what works well in moving climate policy forward, facilitating networking between groups so we can learn from each other, sharing plans and ideas, sharing resources, identifying opportunities to help each other. So. Knowing that, um, I kind of frame the SDGs with the three questions of the climate reality core. So the climate reality core, um, one thing I didn't mention about climate reality is that it was founded by Al Gore, um, Al Gore, the former vice president of the United States and, and his mission towards um, you know, a cleaner uh, atmosphere and, and protecting um, against the adverse effects of climate change. Um, so his three questions that he asked of climate reality leaders that we kind of sell the message is must we change can we change will we change and so you know i see the sdgs as a way that we can frame these three questions um, that uh what do we know about each of these sdgs about you know is there a requirement for change probably because someone set it as a goal can we change them and will we change is there an impetus for change so i'm going to get through it i'm going to give you the the um the quick version slides in 10 version of the must we change so the first question must we change uh here is the the simple breakdown um this is the basics of climate of uh what we know um we know that solar radiation um it, it in the form of light waves is passing through the atmosphere and we know that that light is is most of the radiation is trapped by the earth and it warms it some of the rays do um radiate back out um, those are typically the on the spectrum of infrared waves and um, the infrared waves need to be able to escape at a certain amount um, to maintain the temperature of the planet uh, when the um, atmosphere is um, is composed of different chemicals and different and, and different elements we get uh, more waves getting trapped and that is going to warm the planet so as the co2 in the atmosphere increases we're going to get more trapped radiation and more trapped radi radiation is the same idea as a greenhouse which is why we call it the greenhouse gas um, greenhouse gas effect um, greenhouse the impact of greenhouse gas emissions um, and this manifests in, in present day in different ways one way you might have heard of this or seen this is uh, the explosion of pollen pollen um, this spring, I know in Saskatoon, my dad went down and filmed a little video of himself shaking the, the pine tree and, or uh, yeah, uh, and the, the spruce tree, sorry, and seeing all of the, the, the different, um, the release of all the pollen. And, you know, I'm not saying this, this is a bad thing. I'm not saying that this is, you know, oh, humans are going to be impacted by pollen through allergies. That's not, to me, the, the driving factor or the driving thing. I think it's what I'm saying, what I want you to get away from this, take away from this is that. Uh, drought conditions create this reaction from trees and we have to reckon with that. Um, you know, having, and this isn't a drought this year, this is drought last year. So trees work on a different time scale than humans. So the impact of having drier weather last year and extreme heat over the last few years um, is, is really difficult for plants. And this is just the tree saying, okay, I need to propagate. I need to make more babies. I need to survive. I want my species to survive. So I'm going to um, release more, I'm going to create more pine cones and release more pollen to do that. So this is what I would say is a, a symptom of a warmer and wilder, um, or this is what warmer and wilder, how it manifests. So keeping that in mind, um, here's another example for you. Uh, here is more potholes. Um, we, we see that road repair is its own season in Saskatoon, and I'm sure Regina is the same. Um, we've got, I would say this is uh, because of the freeze-thaw cycles that we're experiencing. So a warmer winter 
um, where there's more temperatures closer to zero, we're getting um, thawing and expansion um, in cement, um, water gets trapped and, and, and if, I don't understand the physics of, 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 of pavement, um, but this is a, a symptom of warmer, wetter and wilder. So, um, you know, thinking about how this might impact infrastructure uh, and sustainable cities when it comes to the sustainable development goals. I've got number nine and 11 there for the two SDGs that that relates to. And previously thinking about uh, uh, SDGs 15 and 13, about life on land and climate action. So the SDGs can help us um, thinking about what's warmer, wetter and wilder as well. So coming back to the SDGs, I would love to know if there was an SDG that you think connects to climate action, that maybe in the work that you do or in, in what you see, um, you see this um, manifesting. So just write in one number into the chat. Um, is there an SDG that you think connects to uh, climate action? And I'm gonna say you can't pick 13 because 13 is climate action. So. Go ahead and write into the chat if you think there's an SDG that connects with climate change. Or that would be most important to you that you think is most important to solve climate change or work on climate change. So we've got one, no poverty, two, zero hunger, three, good health and well-being, quality education, five, gender equality. I don't know if these are too big or we've got, okay, we've got one here, affordable and clean energy, number seven. Someone's put that in the chat. Thank you. Ah, someone's put 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions. 11, sustainable cities and community. 12, responsible consumption and production. Yeah, and there's probably a case for any of those, which I think is really cool with the SDGs that we can all be working towards 13, but maybe focusing on a different SDG to get there. So um, while climate change might be what's centered, we can still work on it from many different ways. So thank you for sharing those in the chat. I think that's a great reflection and I'd love to dive more into that during the conversation portion of the evening. Um, so the second question then, once we think about you know, what the impacts might look like of climate change, um, can we change? And this is where I come back to the work with Saskatoon Environmental Advisory Committee. I told you that our goal, the target that we set for the city was to reduce the community's emissions by 15%. I have to report that the reality is that from 2014 to 2019, we decreased by 2%. So about 80,000 tons of CO2 equivalent gases. Um, so those are all types of gases that contribute to greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so, you know, 2% does not sound great when you're aiming for 15. Um, I think it's great that we are tracking it. However, I think being able to track it is part of the can we change because you can't measure, you can't change things until you measure it. Um, you have to measure it to manage it, I think it was the expression. Um, and it's encouraging that, you know, the community actions are having an impact. 2% um, is still lower. So I think that that's great to see. And in fact, if you do it by per capita, it's actually less, which some people think is a good indicator because our population has, has increased while we have still not increased our amount of CO2 emissions. It's not great though, because we're still emitting a lot of CO2. So um, take that for what it's worth. I will mention that this comes from a report that is put up by the city of Saskatoon. Um, I don't know the frequency, but I'll give you the 2019 report. I'll put the link to that in the chat if you're interested to know a little bit more about the low emissions community plan, the LEC. Um, and I think this is a great initiative that, you know, helps the city of Saskatoon report on how they're going to reduce emissions and how they're going to make this a municipal issue. Um, and a, a great initiative of Climate Reality Canada, so specifically in Canada, the Climate Reality Groups, um, is a report called the Climate um, National Climate League. They're trying to play on the idea of the NHL, they went with the NCL, um, the National Climate League, um, and they put out a report every year, and this is the 2021 report that um, there's a picture of here, and uh, I will put a link in the chat to that as well. And if you ever, if you're like a BB, you're putting way too many links in the chat, I can't copy all of these, um, I will share my email at the end and you and I will I'm, I will gladly share all the links with you at another time as well. So don't feel like you have to copy all the links right now. Um, the National Climate League is uh, this report that's put out and it's really around that idea of we need to be able to measure what matters. Um, we want to be able to show local solutions that have an impact because we do know that local 
initiatives um, are what drive a lot of, of municipal action. Um, or, and sorry, a lot of municipal action is what drives provincial and federal action. And we want to put municipalities at least on a path to carbon neutrality. Um, and so it, I think it's a great way to get uh, data and it's all gathered by volunteer data collectors and, and they work together to do citizen, um, to build citizen interest in um, data, which is really fascinating. Um, so to that end, there are 66 municipalities across Canada that contributed to the last year. And uh, Saskatoon was one of them. And it's a great way for us to be able to compare and show what uh, what's happening across the country. So I really like this map. It kind of highlights a little bit, you know, where is there room for change? Where, is, where are good things happening? Um, what are the different priorities and the whole report is really well is really beautiful and really nice to be able to get a glimpse there is an in-depth in-depth table as well that anyone can go into so if you wanted to write your municipal counselor and say hey how come my city's not doing so great in electric charging prince albert i don't have very great electric charging options look at the other cities across canada that are doing this well and you could show the metrics for comparable cities and they actually even use comparable sizes which is really nice so they'll talk about smaller cities medium cities large cities um so i just have a couple examples here from the report yes in 2021 usage of public transit dropped dramatically in saskatoon there was the pandemic and we saw a disparity increase so we saw that um anyone who could afford to was not going to be using um not going to be using public transportation um, and it's interesting to note that there is no ridership data from Regina so even being able to go to your counselors and say hey how come I don't have this data that I want to contribute to this to, um, to this uh, collection it, it, it would be you know impetus for change right there um, one area that I think is of interest is uh, urban greenness um, so Saskatoon has increased its um, green space and um, that's good to see we're still doing less well than other cities. I think some of this is topography because we're so flat that we can people just build everywhere. In cities like St. John's, you've got mountains and bays and valleys, so you can't. Um, but I think what's interesting here is what defines green space. So green space are, tr are often considered treed spaces. So maybe we need a better way of measuring that. So one question that some climate reality leaders from Saskatoon raised with the climate league um, coordinators were, hey, can you include grasslands, swales, and wetlands? Because that's the type of green space we have just inside Saskatoon city borders. So that's the type of data that we're waiting on them to uh, to figure out. And actually, I, this presentation reminded me that I need to follow up on that because maybe we aren't counting those spaces. So um, I, I will say that I think it's an opportunity for Saskatoon to to maybe be leaders to say what qualifies as green space and how are we measuring what is a carbon sink what is capturing carbon for us so um that's the kind of thing that can the conversations that can start when we have this kind of information so can we change yeah we can if we have if we're measuring what matters is my message for you with this so the last question is will we change so do we have motivation to change can we change is a huge question um, and it's not one that we are alone in asking. Uh, there's, group, there's a group called ICLE, which is uh, based in the US, but it's about local governments for sustainability. They're an international nonprofit or non-governmental organization um, that promotes sustainable development and they provide technical support. And I think what I, why I wanted to show this plan is that we have to think about where we as citizens who might be working outside of bureaucratic outside of bureaucracy we're not you know maybe necessarily employed by the municipality where can we interject into this process where can we contribute who do we need to write letters to where do we want to um, talk to our counselors where do we want to talk um, to change practices so this is important to know how we can work within the systems and groups like ICLE are great for that Another group that I wanted to highlight um, is a group called Beautiful Trouble, and I will put a link to this in the chat. One of the models I learned about through training um, um, by people who've gone through um, work by Beautiful Trouble is the spectrum of allies. So the spectrum of allies says, you know, who can I shift to get from passive opposition to the ideas towards maybe neutral or towards being a passive ally or who can i shift from neutral towards being a passive ally so i think about one example that i'd give to this is maybe i don't rely on active transport today 
but maybe a colleague could con- could encourage me to cycle with them a couple times a week or even to try it once. Um, so that colleague is being is helping me move from being neutral towards being a passive ally. Um, so it's those small actions. And I the way that we talked about this at the city of Saskatoon when I was involved with, with SIAC was friendly neighbor. Who could we be? Um, How can we be a friendly neighbor and say, hey, neighbor, how can we help you? If you click on the video that I gave above uh, from from climate change is a municipal issue, um, that's how we start the video. Hey, neighbor, um, let's talk about waste management. Let's talk about, um, you know, potholes. Let's talk about more storm events um, that we're noticing, more flooding in neighborhoods. Why is that? Oh, climate action. And then that's a way to get people to persuade them to move. Um, their priorities. And so the questions that I like to ask and that I've learned to ask um, through the help of many people um, is what is most just? What would benefit most people? Um, I have a lot of privilege and unearned privilege and I have to think about, you know, my access to a bicycle or a car or or bus, whatever mode of opportunity, um, what mode of transportation I want to use is is a privilege. Some people don't have that choice. So what is most just and what would help most people? Um, I sometimes forget that I have a 20 minute commute by by bike or 40 minute walk or a 10 minute drive. And that's all, those are all reasonable distances. Some people actually have a 20 minute car ride. And if you calculate what that is for a, um, bus or, or bike ride, that's not really reasonable. So thinking about what is just, um, what are your priorities and what are my priorities? There's an intersection. You may, you may remember I'm a former math teacher. So I think about the Venn diagram, um, you, me, where do we intersect? Where might there be solutions that, uh, benefit us both? And the third question is, what are the stories we want to tell? So if things went really well, if we were getting to our goal, if we were getting to what I call the ocean of optimism, what are the stories that we would want to tell when everything is going really great? What are the stories that we would want to tell? And if you and I can have a common story or a story that has common elements, maybe then we'll get to a solution that we both find just and both find equitable. So thinking about that and these kinds of prompts might be a way to um, to move the conversation on climate change forward. So think about that. Uh, maybe those are questions we can come back to in a few minutes. Um, so how might we change? Um, I think that's the question that we're asking. If you are interested in doing climate reality training and thinking, and and this excites you, thinking about how you could contribute to the conversation with whatever background, whatever whatever training you come from, um, please do check out the link for climaterealityproject.org. And thinking about, you know, in that SDG, uh, what is the one, what is the SDG that... uh, you would want to work towards. I just realized I copied my slide and I put an X through climate change. That is not the point of this slide. The point of the slide is to say all of these work towards climate action. So 13 is still relevant here. I apologize. I didn't correct that slide when I copied it, but all of these are working towards 13 climate action. And so the last slide that I would say, the message from climate reality leadership is, you know, come join us, you know, get your voice heard. make the voting choices that work towards climate action and uh, help us work towards a common future that um, benefits everyone. So like I said, that training link is in the chat. And uh, if you are interested in in getting the, sorry, if you are interested in getting the data for um, or knowing a little bit more about climate reality in Canada um, and getting involved with the climate hub, I will put those links in the chat. The second link is just a direct link to um, get registered. And then a climate reality leader from Saskatoon will reach out to you. Um, We're actually going on a camping trip in a few weeks. We're doing a book club. So we'll just like pick a book and read it together about climate change and climate solutions. Um, Yeah, and it's just not, it's a nice way to get to know people who are in the same realm. So while I had that experience of of not knowing my place in this when I was at that conference in Minneapolis, coming back to Saskatoon and getting involved with the folks doing work in here in Saskatoon really made me see how my experiences as a teacher, as someone who cared about outdoor education and environmental education all led me towards being able to be a good partner for climate action at at the municipal level. So um, yes, please do feel free to reach out. Um, A huge thank you to um, Mayan and, and Carol and 
uh, you know, for, for helping me um, get involved today and contributing and Anang for in introducing. And I have to also say thank you to Adrian Werner from Climate Reality Canada for setting up the partnership. So thanks everyone. Thank you. Um, that was great.